Welcome fans to today's episode of The Great Legend Show. I'm your host, The Great Legend, and have I got a show for you. Let's see folks, today's episode isn't going to be about video games. It's not going to be about cooking with The Great Chef. Today we're getting back to the basics and today The Great Legend, Ship Howard, is coming at you live with the video of the century. <laughs> so what we got going on, we're going to be talking about the Great Legends Guide to Comic Book Collecting. Comic books have been around since the late 1800s. Lots have been going on, you know, now we're in the current era, 2011. Got some good comic books, and, and a lot of you folks out there probably didn't even know I collect comic books, but I started collecting comic books about when I was in junior high. I was about, I guess, uh, 12 or 11, maybe. I was um, trying to remember my first comic book I ever got. Uh, it was a Fantastic Four one, I think. <laughs> I love Fantastic Four. My favorite, you know, while we're on the subject of comic books, my favorite comic book uh, hero is... Uh, Ben Grimm, aka The Thing from the Fantastic Four. Just so awesome. Best best ever. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started with just comic book collecting, okay? Um, what I have here, I have a book um, that I use um, when I grade comics. You know, say I'm grading comics, um, pretty much the only time I'll actually grade my own comics is if I'm selling them on eBay. And the book I use is the official Overstreet comic book grading guide, okay? I love this book. I mean, um, there's a uh, place that will grade your comics called the CGC. It's probably the number one place that grades comics um, on the professional level, you know, the real deal level, it's CGC. And what this book is, this is by Overstreet, the famous folks behind the Overstreet comic book price guide which I'll show you a couple of those in a minute, but they go on the, the CGC folks, they go on a 10 point scale. So 10.0 is gem mint. I mean, that's perfect quality. 9.9 .9 mint, 9.8 near mint to mint, you know, 9.6 near mint plus. Anytime you're in the 9.0 and above, you're, you're near mint. And then, you know, the eights are very fine. The seven is, is, very fine. The sixes are fine. Fives are very good. Zero, uh, threes, one, one to threes or so. 1.8 to threes are about good. And 0 0.5 is fair. 0 0.5 is probably going to be your lowest, lowest as far as just the comic sucks. But anyway, so what this book also has, it'll have, um, you know, like this, check it out, see? Up in the right hand corner, 9.0, very fine near mint. It'll show like some descriptions of some comics. Um, it'll show like little things like what's wrong with it, like, well, there's an, an eighth of an inch corner bend, you know, stuff like that. So the book's really good. I mean, like right here on this, uh, this comic here, it says small stains. There's a small stain on that. Um, so the comic's really good, and, and say you want, um, this is nine. This is talking about the 9.0 comics, but at the beginning of each uh, grade, 9.0, very fine to near mint. It talks all about it, and on this side it has like things that could possibly be wrong, like, um, okay, for it to make it a 9.0, the cover wear has to be almost flat, um, bindery, limited number of defects, um, some discoloration of the staples are allowed, um, only the slightest tears allowed near the staples. So this is for like say 9.0. I mean, let me read. Um, it's rare that you'll find a 10.0 CGC graded comic, but they are out there. You, you know, they're they're gem mint. Um, pretty much for a gem mint book, it's an exceptional example of a book. The best ever seen. The slightest binary defects or printing flaws may be seen only upon very close inspection. So. Other than that, I mean, 
staining, stamps, spine rolls, spine split, rust, staples, all that. None of that is allowed in a 10.0 gym mint. Anyways, I'm going to, um, you know, need to cut this short, but if you want to grade your own comics and you're going to want to sell them on eBay, I uh, highly recommend the Overstreet comic book grading guide, or if you have the cash, um, currently, uh, you can submit your comics to the CGC, and I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. Um, and then you can have them pro professionally graded. And then when you sell that particular comic on eBay, you know, you want to take under consideration that that comic is going to be a lot worth a lot more money because you had the professionals graded. So, you know, for me, I actually tack on quite a bit if I'm selling a CGC comic book on eBay. Now, the next thing you want to look at is you want to look at what are your comics worth? Now, the book I highly recommend is the official Overstreet Comic Book Price Guide, okay? Official Overstreet Comic Book Price Guide. This book's a pretty thick book, but it's going to give you all of the prices, um, what your comic books are worth. It goes by that 10.0 scale. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this or not, but if you look right there, It'll have good, very good, you know, stuff like that, near mint, 9.4. And it'll have columns, like that's the near mint column. So those comic books, Overstreet's graded to them as that, you know. So this um, is the 33rd edition. I bought this back when I bought the Overstreet uh, grading book. So these are pretty old books. I know the official grading book is, they're on their third print. This comes out once a year. This is the... 33rd edition. This is my copy. On my copies, I always put, you can't really see it, but I put a clear contact paper over all my uh, paperback books that I use a lot of. That way, if I spill anything on them, this clear contact paper I could wipe off. It's all library, industrial grade. Um, yeah, I get it from a library, if you know what I mean. Secrets. But anyway, so that's what I do. That's the 33rd book. It had a. Wait, let me see this. This is. I think that's from X-Men number one, if I'm not mistaken. X-Men number one's cover. There's Beast before he was blue, Iceman, Cyclops, uh, Marvel Girl, uh, Jean Grey, um, Archangel's up there against Magneto. So, yeah, that's that's a real nice book, you know, to uh, grade your comics on. And um, the, the thing I wanted to show you, you know, it costs, I don't know, if, if you don't want to spend money on these price guides, you don't have to. Look at this. Spine label look familiar? Look at that, 741.50973 OVE, the OVE being for Overstreet, the Overstreet comic book price guide. This is the 40th edition, 2010 to 2011. Look at that. Look at that label. That's right, people, your public library. You need to get to your public library. If, you're, if, if you don't want to pay the big bucks for the book, just go get it from the library. You know, you check them out for two or three weeks, renew the books online, I mean... God, they make it so simple for you. Now, if you don't want to um, use the library to keep track of what your books cost, um, I'm going to show you a website here in a little bit that's going to do it all for you online. Really awesome, and um, I'll show you that here in a minute. But first, I want you to see uh, some of my comics that I like, um, some of my favorite ones I've been collecting uh, as of late that actually this got me back in because I was out of the comic book collecting business for a while. But uh, I really like Marvel Zombies. I think those are awesome. Good storyline, you know, where all the Marvel superhero characters from another dimension are like zombies and they're coming at you, coming at you live. Actually, they're coming at you dead, but really good stuff. And I've also liked Death. I like the death of superheroes. So I got a couple of those not too long ago. So I'm going to show you those in a minute. Stay tuned. This is The Great Legends Show presenting The Great Legends Guide to Comic Book Collecting. We'll be right back after these special messages. Do you have old comics? Are they like really old and stuff? And this is a sorry excuse for a little commercial filler, a little filler time for the Great Legend Show, but do you have old comics? Make sure those comics are protected. You want to put them in poly bags. This is an old poly bag from 1991 and an old backing board. Now, Great Legend, this comic, particular comic, Great Legend never checked it for acid. Look at this. Let's lift this comic out of the bag. Look 
Look at this comic. Pretty mint condition. You know what? I'm, I don't have any acid on this board. You know why? Because I take care of my comics, as you should. Every five to seven years to ten years, always open up your comic books. Make sure there's no acid on the back that has escaped. Because you want to keep them in mint condition. Another comic right here. Superman vs. Doomsday. Superman the Man of Steel, number 19. Look at that right there. You see on the back of that backing board, some of the acid from the back of the comic has got on this backing board. This backing board was a backing board that was not acid free, and if it was, I didn't check it because this has been in the comic book box since 1993. So let's check it out real quick. This is the back of that comic. Get them by the crosshairs. This is the same comic that I just showed you the Superman one here pretty much mint condition white pages looks really good always wash your hands before you handle your comics and if you're really crazy put some gloves on dude look at the doomsday oh my god you see how the, how he just punched Supergirl's like face Jesus I haven't seen this in a long time she just got bitch slapped by doomsday though anyway okay back to the deal let me flip it over Get them by the crosshairs. Look at this, real close. You see that? Get them by, it's kind of a reversed image. See? That's the backing board. So, these comics, particular comics in this second comic book box, weren't really checked um, until maybe two weeks ago. So yeah, I ordered some uh, acid-free backing boards and new poly bags. BCW supplies carry them, so... Yeah, folks, anyways, always remember, use acid-free backing boards and poly bags. Now, if you use the poly bags, you're still going to want to check them every five to seven years, or at least every ten at the minimum. And you may even want to put your uh, comics in some Mylar, too, or some Mylites, too. There are two milli, um, millimeter um, bags, and uh, they're kind of thicker. Um, but they'll be great for archival storage. Library of Congress uses them, so yeah, be careful. All right, now let's get back to some of the Great Legends' favorite comics that I'm going to be sending to the CGC pretty soon. Check these out. Jason vs. Leatherface by Topps Comics. Coming at you live, people. Jason vs. Leatherface. All three of these comics are in near-mint condition. That's number three of three, two of three, one of three. Jason vs. Leatherface, coming at you live only on the Great Legend Show. I want to get these graded by CGC. I was telling you a little bit earlier about the CGC. Um, currently, CGC has a deal where for 17 bucks they'll grade a modern comic from the current era, 1980 and above, I think. They'll grade those for 17 bucks a book. So, Really good. It adds to the value of the book. So That's Jason vs. Leatherface, people. Good times. Good people. Good comic. Next comics. I don't know when these came out. I was just a kid. It was like sometime in the 90s, but uh, Matt Groening of the, uh, I think his name's Groening. I don't know what the hell he's growing, but anyways, these are the comics that first came out. His first uh, four stories. So I have Itchy and Scratchy number one. It has the um, giant sized Itchy and Scratchy poster. It's part two of the Ultra Giant four part poster. We have the Simpsons comics number one, near mint condition. I, I would figure, I mean, I haven't really, I don't even know if I really read these at all. But yeah, good book. Um, this has the part one of four. We have the, the Bart Man with the cool mirror looking reflective cover there. Part three of four on that poster, Bart Man number one. And I have two of these, Radioactive Man. Of course, if you remember, that's part four of four of the ultra big ass poster anyway so if you remember those the radioactive man that was actually the really good expensive comic in the simpsons series so want to get those eventually graded those are really fun good simpsons gotta love them. next up we have black panther this is part of the initiative storyline black panther this is number uh 27 
And, um, you know, it's when him and Storm were members of the Fantastic Four along with the Thing and um, Human Torch because Reed and Sue Richards went off to, you know, build their marriage back up because the the strife they had during the Civil War storyline. So that's 27. And then at 28, we have one of those um, Marvel zombie covers by Sudam. Sudam is what I call him. Kick ass. I bought two of those. Um... Because sometimes I like having extra of my zombie covers. Those are dang good mint condition. Uh, these I actually got from a place off of eBay.com. Look for someone named Eminem Comics on uh, eBay.com. Always have great deals on Marvel Comics. So those are great comics. So I want to get those great. I actually need number 29 and 30 to complete my little Marvel zombie run on um, the Black Panther initiative here. So I need to get that one. Good times. Another little quick series I, I was collecting. I, I don't think I have all these because they went for more issues. But Ultimate Wolverine versus the Hulk. Pretty much it's just them nonstop fighting. Really awesome. Um, I have um, number two of that as well. Ultimate Wolverine versus Hulk. And then I have the limited edition uh, Director's Cut. Ultimate uh, Wolverine versus Hulk Director's Cut. And it features uh, collects uh, issues one and two. So director's cut there. Good stuff. Okay, Marvel Zombies first appearance. Ultimate Fantastic Four, issue 21. This is crossover. Crossover part one. Then, also, I have the Ultimate Fantastic Four, the variant. Crossover part one. This is the variant cover where Ultimate Fantastic Four, uh, Reed Richards, gets to meet the other Reed Richards in the other dimension, the dimension that has the uh, Marvel Zombies, and he's trying to warn the ultimate uh, Reed Richards that, yeah, we have zombies and they're eating everybody, so that's the variant edition. Crossover Part 1. Then I have the Crossover Part 2, Magneto holding up Reed Richards there. That's the Magneto from the other dimension, I think. Um, that's Part 2. Then we have Crossover Part 3, Ultimate Fantastic Four. Number 23, that's the finale of that little beginning Marvel Zombies um, storyline right there. There's the Black Panther again. Everyone loves the Black Panther. Remember those? I showed you those earlier. Then we have another series here. Ultimate Fantastic Four, number 30. More, Mar more of Marvel Zombies. This is Frightful, Part 1. This is a variant cover, variant edition. This is Frightful Part 1 with the variant cover. This is another variant cover of that Marvel Zombies style, Frightful Part 1. Another variant cover. So with this Marvel Zombies, they started having a lot of variant covers here. Then we have Frightful Part 2. See? Human Torch on the cover, looking awesome there, feeling the pain. Number 31, Frightful Part 2. We have the Variant Edition. This is actually one of the first Marvel Zombie full covers. As you notice, these Ultimate Fantastic Fours, they have the number up here, but they have a bar, usually like a bar coming down over the artwork. This one was the first cover that didn't have that bar, and it's Variant Edition. This monster... This monster, of course, that was one of them old school Fantastic Four deals. And then we have Frightful Part 3. And that's Ultimate Fantastic Four number 32. I actually have this one in a CGC graded. I'll show that to you in a minute. So we're still looking at the Marvel Zombies. Good comics. Good times. Great legend. I want to show you this one real quick. This is a first edition, first printing of the... Batman uh, Nightfall 11, but it's Batman number 497. This is when Bane breaks the back of Batman, Batman. So I may get that one graded. I'm not sure, though. But, you know, that's that's a cool issue. Um, 1993 representing classic times. That's a uh, Okay, I'm starting to run kind of low on video camera battery. Let's take a look at Marvel Zombies Series 1. Of course, this is the first printing. This is of the um, classic Amazing Fantasy number 15. 
All you comic book lovers know that that was uh, Spidey's first appearance in Amazing Fancy 15, so I have that. I actually got uh, two copies of that, uh, that one. All these are pretty much in mint condition, and they could probably go for 9.8 or 9. Point, I don't know, 9.6 and above. All 9, 9.0 and above for sure, but Marvel Zombies first printing of Marvel Zombies Volume 1, comic book number 1. We have the variant edition, Marvel variant edition. This, of course, is of a uh, rendition of Spider-Man number one, which uh, Todd McFarlane did that famous Spider-Man one cover. Um, Todd McFarlane's Spider-Man was one of the best looking Spideys out there. Another variant edition here, we got Marvel Zombies. This is number one, another variant cover. This is like the fourth printing one here. This is, of course, of the original Hulk comic you know when the Hulk was gray but Hulk's a zombie now so another number one of five another cover there have Marvel Zombies volume one issue two well Captain America on the cover and I actually have two of those I don't know why I just sometimes I get multiple copies Marvel Zombies uh, issue three of five same thing two copies got the little Hulk on the the blades there so cool Hulk's eating eyeballs there I think Hulk ate Wolverine's eye or something so that's Marvel Zombies 3 good looking comic you know okay Marvel Zombies 3 of 5 there's another one this is of course uh, a little Electra and a Daredevil gotta support the old schools variant edition number 3 that's a variant edition of that one. This one, of course, is the X Men number one, the Uncanny X Men one looking Marvel Zombies cover. Got Beast there and Archangel. Kind of like that CGC uh, price guide I showed you. Nice Man and Archangel and Cyclops, Marvel Girl, broken in half there. Issue four or five. And you know, since X Men's pretty cool, I had to get another one. I think I bought most of these in doubles because I was going to submit them to CGC. This is a classic Amazing Spider-Man rendition cover, and I've seen this. This is uh, this is Goblin Dragon uh, Spidey giving one of the dragons. Second printing variant, or just different cover of issue four of Marvel Zombies uh, Volume 1. Then we have the classic Spidey and Mary Jane wedding cover, the zombified look. To round out that series, Marvel Zombies Volume 1, Issue 5, and I have uh, two of those. Oh, actually, I forgot one. Classic, classic, classic. Silver Surfer. And actually, in the Marvel Zombies storyline, a lot of the zombies started eating parts of the Silver Surfer, and then those zombies developed the cosmic power of flight. So, zombies started flying around. That's second printing. Uh, Marvel Zombies 5 of 5. So, that's every cover from... Volume One's Marvel Zombie Run, every cover, right there. Want to get them all graded by CGC, but just look at them. Looking at them now, I didn't know I had that damn many zombie comics. This is the one shot Marvel Zombies Dead Days. This is actually the prequel that shows how you know all the zombie crap started taking place. This is a fold-out cover. In the early '90s, X-Men had a new comic line. It was a new uh, X-Men comic. And they had four covers. One was with Magneto. One was Cyclops, Wolverine. The others had Colossus and some other heroes on it. And you put all four of the comics together. You put like one, two, three, four. Um, and it would make the whole thing. But some people, and I don't know where mine is. I may have sold it way back in the day. But I had X-Men number one, this same kind of cover. And it was a fold-out cover. And, of course, this is also a fold-out cover. I'm not going to get it out of the, the comic, but mint condition. Um, I will be rebagging and reboarding all of these because um, all these zombie ones are going to go to the, eventually to the CGC once I get some money. I have two of those Marvel Dead Days comics. And I'm going to show you uh, my Marvel Zombies vs. Army of Darkness. But I'll be right back because I need to plug my camera in because I'm running uh, low on batteries here. So I hope you enjoyed the comic books so far. They're pretty awesome. Be right back.